Welcome. I hope everyone out there had a fantastic Mother's Day. If you spent the day with your mom, if you are a mom, if I don't know, all sorts of scenarios, maybe grandma, whatever the case may be. I hope you had a fantastic Mother's Day. I sure did. I spent the day with my baby and that is and my husband. That makes me so happy. And there were there were a couple of cookies involved. I'm not going to lie. Really, really good cookies, which I chose not to share with Deli. I apologize in advance, Deli. Deli is here. He will be managing the chat. So get on in there. Get those super chats in. I'm feeling good today. I hope you are as well. Um, super chats will be read and I'd love to hear your perspective on these topics. So hopefully you'll be very opinionated. The more opinionated, by the way, the better. Bring it, as I like to say. Today, the title of today's show is Her Guy Friends Aren't Just Friends Don't Get Played. Can a woman really have male friends? I think that's a really interesting conversation. We're going to talk about it in light of a video that we're going to show. We're going to talk about why delusion, I believe delusion, not confidence, delusion is dangerous for women. And why it's nasty and dangerous, by the way, to travel down that black hole of promiscuity for both sexes, by the way. I'm going to be reacting to a woman. This isn't incredible, this story. She ended a 14-year marriage, 14 years, okay, for a soulmate. She claims it was her soulmate who she barely knew. And the guy turns around and doesn't want to be with her at the end of the day. So she wound up with nothing. Is that a good idea? We're going to read about the intricacies of how that went down. You're not going to believe why this woman made the decision she did. We're going to we're going to go through it the whole night, how they met. Oof, crazy stuff. Uh, then we'll dig into the friends and stuff. And then I have to alert you to something going on with the Matrix. Craziness. We talk about forever chemicals, those chemicals that stay in your body that make you really sick that you can't get rid of. Well, I need to tell you where they are because they're actually in places that you don't expect. We're going to talk about your contact lenses. You wear contact lenses at home? You need to listen. And um, we're going to talk about some vegetables, some fruits that you eat. As it turns out, uh, some nasty stuff is going on with your food supply that you need to know about. And there's some different choices that you can make to account for that. Remember, I want you healthy. I want you empowered. I want you happy. That is the goal of this show. So we're going to start with delusion. And um, oh, we also have another topic that's actually not in my breakdown, but promiscuity. We have some stats on that. And why promiscuity and promiscuous singles are essentially hurting their chances of a happy marriage. So we're going to talk about a little bit about that data, too, where that comes from. All right. So let's start with King Riches. I like his show. I like his vibe, his energy. And I've said that before. And this is an interesting exchange with a woman who was 32 years old and seems to not want to face reality about what's happened in her life, where it may be headed. Let's listen to what she says first, and then we'll react. But let me ask you this. Like, like oh, age is nothing but a number. I'm so sorry. Age like, ain't nothing you but a number. Talk, yeah, 100%. You sure about that? I, I mean, uh, I, my life hasn't even started yet. Do you, think, do you think biology runs by that kind of logic? Well, no. the older I get, the younger I look. So it, I don't know. But your ability to have children. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I to say nothing. I don't know. Like, the, I don't know. The older you get, the less <laughs> possibility you have to have children. So it does matter like what age you find your partner at. And it does matter yes. when you find the one you want. Someone Google a woman at 49 having kids from it's her own so womb. Dangerous. So dangerous. So some, so some, so some, I go to the gym. So it dangerous. doesn't matter if there's a woman in Guatemala and she was 50 and she had her first child. Bro. It doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that's what's common or typical. I go or to healthy. the gym. I go to the gym. I eat natural products. I eat... I, I, I'm very what much. Food? I'm very healthy. <laughs> Natural products. Uh, everything. That's yeah. a strange choice of words. Would you like? I Why mean, did you just say food? <laughs> yeah, like I'm very, I'm very clean eating, healthy person. I, I'm, I'm really on point with myself. So I don't think I will get to an age where I can't have kids. I don't think that will happen. I think I will. You think you will never get to an age where you can't have kids? I mean, <laughs> it's not so impossible. You defy, you Bro, defy it's, biology. It's not impossible. It's not. I know. Okay, I don't know personally, but there's people. There's it's women. Not fair for the there's kid. women it's older. Not fair, it's fair for, fair for the kid. I'm okay. sorry. Listen, I'm, listen let me tell you something. Okay, okay. so <laughs> let, let's talk about this. First of all, I think we can all acknowledge that she's an attractive woman. She is 32 years old. It, it seems to me that she does take care of herself. You can all, always look at a woman's skin. 
Uh, this is interesting, actually. Look at a woman's skin, and if, it, if her skin is glowy and you can tell that she is eating clean, she's talking about, you know, I eat natural products. She doesn't mean, you know, that she's eating the household items or products like skincare products. She means that she eats probably organic food. She eats fruits and vegetables, clean eating. You know, she's, she's watching what she eats. She's drinking her water, all that stuff. I think that is reflected in what she looks like. So to compliment her on that, I, I believe you because it's, it's well evidenced there. She looks like somebody who does exercise and prioritize that. Great. That does not change the reality that some of what you're saying just isn't true, honey. Okay, so we need to just, first of all, you're 32 years old. She says her life hasn't started yet. It's started. It's been underway for some time, actually. 32 is not 22, is not 12, is not two. So you have to understand you are progressing in age. That is a reality. And she says, the older I get, the younger I look. Now, I don't know what she looked like at 20, Maybe she looks better now than she did at 20. I don't know if she was fit at 20. Maybe at 20 she wasn't eating clean. That's possible. But odds are most people, even if they look better when they get older, like you you have met those people, right? You see them and you're like, wow, she looks better at 35 than she did at 25 because now she's really taking care of herself. That does happen. Odds are she doesn't look younger. Younger is very easy to see because young people have like puffy baby fat faces, right? Which you lose, you lose, you get a little bit more hollowed out. Young people always have a lot of puffiness around the eyes. There's just something to a young face that's different. And I think that in women, we notice it more because I think that we pay attention to it more. We pay attention to the progression of age societally in women a little bit differently, visually from an aesthetic perspective. So let's just be real. You, you don't look the same. You don't look as youthful. Very, very likely you don't look as youthful as you did 10 years ago. She's talking about, this is the best line though. I don't think I'll get to an age where I can't have kids. Honey, you going to be 85? You're going to be in labor? No, of course you're going to get to an age where you can't have kids. And again, this is something I love sometimes in this, these spaces on these panels, like the nuance is completely lost. So Can somebody get pregnant at 49? Can a woman get pregnant in her 50s? Yes, that can happen. Can they have a healthy pregnancy and have a healthy baby? Yes, that can happen. But are you increasing your chances of complications when you get into those age brackets? You are. Does that mean it's going to happen to you necessarily? No, but we have to be able to speak about these things and look at the reality of generalizations and averages. And on average, it is healthier to have babies when you're not in your 50s or you're, you know, when you're 49 years old. Again, can you have a healthy outcome? Of course. Is it individually dependent? Sure, to an extent. If you are taking care of yourself, can it be a little bit different for you? Sure, sure. But is that the ideal? When you think about stuff, is that, should that be the goal? Should women say, well, because there's a chance that I could potentially have a healthy baby and a healthy birth and all of that go well at the age of 49 because I do take care of myself, should I strive for that? And the answer is no. You shouldn't strive for that for many reasons because why would you want that for your life, for your body? First of all, it's going to be harder as you get older, right? Along with even just the the simplest thing as skin elasticity, I'll speak to you as a Female guys may not even think about this stuff, but skin elasticity is better when you're younger. So your belly pops back easier, right? You stretches and then it pops back as you get older. You have less collagen. You have less elasticity. Does that mean you're absolutely going to have saggy belly and stretch marks? No, I had a baby at 40 and I don't have stretch marks. Great. Yay for me. But it could have could have gone differently. So that, that shouldn't be, I'm here to tell you as somebody who made decisions that I would look back on and say I got really lucky, but maybe that wasn't in my best interest to do things this way for many reasons. Don't be afraid to, to like give advice from what you know. Is it ideal? No. Come on, can we all sit down and say it's not ideal for a woman to strive to have a baby at 50? A lot of women won't be able to conceive if they have that strategy. Their eggs are going to be done. Okay, a lot of women don't take great care of themselves and they're not going to be able to have that longevity in their fertility. That's just a reality. So why would you preach that? It's also completely delusional and absurd to say that there's never going to be an age at which you can't have kids. Honey, your estrogen, your hormones are going to change. And at some point, you're not going to be able to have kids. That's the truth. So you're lying to yourself. And that lying is doing you a huge disservice because you're now living in the land of delusion and you're putting things off and you're making decisions based off of that delusion as if it's fact. And it's not. 
So you're going to wake up one day and you're going to realize that, yeah, you know what? Your ability to have kids does go away at some point. You were wrong. And what are you going to be alone wishing that you had just lived in the land of factual reality instead of your own delusion and you'd have a great big old family potentially. So just this stuff's not good for women. And that's why I say it. I'm not saying this to hurt women. I'm saying this because I want your eyes open. I want you to know that some of what's being preached to you, it's just not true. It's not true. Your fertility does have a window. And yeah, it's maybe it's much longer for some people. And maybe, by the way, you know, you got a lot of young women now having fertility issues as well because of the way they eat, because of chemical exposures, because there's no detox pathways, because they're taking birth control pills for years and that's messing with their hormones. There's some other uh, pharmaceutical interventions, shall we say, that are playing a role. Um, but that doesn't mean that you still think about it. You're in a younger body. It, it's, it's just easier and it's just on average better chances of having that family. And what if you want multiple kids? We're going to start at, at 50? Come on. This is not a prescription for success and we have to just stop living in the land of illusion. So it becomes offensive to me in the sense that it's like, why are you lying to yourself and to everybody else? All right. Let's talk about this 14-year marriage. This story shook me. I can't. And there's an image of her as well. Don't worry. You'll get to see what she looks like, that she ended a 14-year marriage for a soulmate who rejected her. This comes from the New York Post. New York Post has been a wealth of interesting material lately. Can you imagine, audience, if you were in a 14-year marriage, or some of you maybe are in a 14-year marriage or longer, would you end that marriage for a soulmate that you don't really know? Can you imagine doing that? I'd love to hear in the chat if you're somebody who would get on board with that. Okay, so let's take a listen to this story. Amanda Trenfield, she's 46 years old. 46 years old. She says she has no regrets for leaving her longtime husband for a soulmate who subsequently rejected her. She made worldwide headlines last year after detailing the emotional saga in a memoir titled When a Soulmate Says No. So she's an Australian author and... She says, well, let's go back to the end and then we're going to cut back. She says, this is what happened the night that she met the soulmate. I'm going to read this first. She described her encounter with soulmate Jason, which took place while she was at a dinner party with her husband. Okay, she goes to the dinner party with her husband and she meets this soulmate. First of all, you're at a dinner party with your husband. Why you got eyes looking at other people? That means she was in an unhappy, unfruitful marriage. Something was going on wrong in that marriage. That's her, by the way. She says, as I settled into my seat, I looked up and immediately lost my breath. When our eyes met, there was an instant familiarity that ran deeper than water cooler chat. Those eyes had locked before, 12 years earlier. His name was Jason, and I hadn't forgotten. So this is a guy she had met 12 years earlier. She probably had been stuck on him for whatever reason. She gets reunited with him at this dinner, and she's like, oh, my God. She remembers. Never got over him, apparently. She didn't explain the circumstances under which she previously met Jason, but said that she felt an immediate attraction and soon struck up a conversation with him. Over the course of the evening, my attraction to Jason developed. I soon became aware of his every breath, and I unconsciously mirrored his pace. Somebody's stuck in a romance novel. Maybe somebody read a little too many, uh, or maybe watched Fifty Shades of Grey a little too many times. Something went wrong here. She caught herself looking at his chest <laughs> through his slim-fitted white evening shirt. Yes, he had a fit-toned and attractive body, but was it his chest I was drawn to? She goes on. The pair continued to drink and talk into the night. With the author insisting that her attraction to Jason only intensified as the hours went by. She's getting more and more heated, right? Looking at him. By the time the group left the restaurant late in the evening, all my senses were on high alert. It was abundantly clear that the energy between Jason and me was somehow charged. They ended the evening with a hug and she leans in, married at the time. Remember, her, she's at the dinner with her husband. Nasty. She leans into his ear. This isn't over. I need to see you again. She says, I've never felt anything like this before. I had never experienced this sensation. I now know without hesitation, without question, without any doubt that the energy we experienced that evening was our souls connecting. I left the dinner party a different woman. Well, honey, you did, but he didn't. He didn't feel what you were feeling. He wasn't on the same page. So she goes on to say how intoxicating it was. Less than a month later, she ended her 14-year marriage with her husband, despite not having had any further communication with Jason. So she doesn't, she leaves the dinner. She doesn't talk to Jason. She still says, oh, she's living in the fantasy, right? The fantasy of what could be. And she ends her marriage of 14 years. <laughs> she says, the author, it says here, the author was left humiliated 
and heartbroken when she told Jason that she had dropped everything only for him to tell her he wasn't interested in pursuing a relationship. <laughs> he was like, nah, I'm good. And then I'm going to go back to the beginning where she says, this is her, her evaluation of what she does. Regardless, she says, I'm proud of how I continue to navigate my life, respecting and honoring those closest to me. I continue to stand in my power, my truth. Anytime somebody says my truth, by the way, delete. And embrace my vulnerability and my strength as an imperfect but always evolving human. Okay. So does this not sound like somebody who's acting awfully childish? I mean, think about it. A 46 grown ass woman goes to this event with her husband. She sees somebody that she's attracted to, right? Maybe it's a, somebody she wanted to hook up with back in the day, or she looks at him 12 years ago. Ooh, you know, she's already married. She says 12 years ago, honey, you were two years into your marriage checking out some guy. Nasty. You got the nasty chip. We all know it. Nasty to do that. She gets mesmerized by this guy and she turns her whole life upside down. I read into the article and it said, I was looking to see what, what, is she alone? She's single? It doesn't say. This is terrible, terrible advice. Now she's trying to say she did something good. She broke up her whole family. For what? For some guy that you had some fantasy with? And this is the problem. People used to get married and there were, again, ups and downs and twists and turns. You think people didn't go out and see somebody that maybe piqued their interest? Maybe you went to work, you had a great conversation. You know, oh, yeah. But you knew that what was going on in your marriage was something special. And you knew. You just stepped away from that. Now we're in this in, you know, in instant gratification culture where she actually threw away everything she had worked so hard for, that whole foundation, for some guy who didn't even want her. She didn't even take the time to see, by the way, which is totally impractical. Is he interested? Also, this is another um, component of delusion because what she was going through that night with this guy was not what he was going through with her. She was thinking, oh, he's into me. She had a whole Cinderella story in her head of how this was going to work out. Probably that she was going to leave her husband and this guy was going to fall in love with her. This was going to be her second chance at love. And the guy's not even into her. It's a horrible mistake to do this. Don't let fantasies get away with you where you're thinking oh, all this stuff could happen and you throw away something that, yeah, maybe it's not, you know, you're not doing, you know, acrobatics in the bedroom every night and maybe it's not, you know, spicy jalapeno peppers every single day, but you're grounded in something with somebody who loves you, somebody who's been through stuff with you, somebody you can count on, somebody you've built a family with. Don't throw that away for some spur of the moment instant gratification nonsense. Don't be that person because you know what? She's 46 years old now. She's not, you know, 30. And she's going to what? Have to go out and try to find stability with someone and justify it in her own mind. Like, oh, I did something good. I did something good. I followed my impulses. You're, you're not supposed to follow all your impulses, by the way, people. Everybody has vices. Everybody has them. If we're going to promote discipline, then part of that discipline is that you don't succumb to your vices, that you know there's a right and a wrong and you're thinking about the longevity of your life and you're not just doing what you want to do moment to moment. This woman hurt herself. And I guarantee you that she's going to wake up in a few years and she's going to realize that she did a lot of damage when she's alone and she's single and she's searching for Mr. Right at 47, 48, 49, 50 and it's not going to be so easy. All for what? some momentary uh, flutter of the eyes with some guy at a dinner table that didn't even want you. This is just, this is what being led by emotion is. It's just pure emotion, escapism, fantasy. And it's silly and it's dangerous to your own happiness ultimately. All right. I often talk about minimizing sex and why that's bad to kind of turn it into something that's just an exchange of bodies across the board, by the way. It's a nasty woman alert I have for you. Um, let's play this. I forget the, Deli, maybe you can pull it up and we'll, I forget which podcast we pulled from here, but 5326 on number whatever. three. Oh, it's from whatever. Okay, because I flipped them. That's right. Let's take a listen. But would we know the names? Yeah, you would. Most of them do stay in LA. Do, does it start with a D and end with a rake? Uh-uh. No, no, no Drake, not but yet. But I love that man. It's Ooh. in the works. Question, if Drake slides into your DMs, Hell yeah. are you, are you on, on it? it? Let everybody go. They're all gone. The rest are gone. Everybody's gone. Ooh. Can, can I ask but a question about that? Would he do that for you, though? 
You don't care? I really don't. You don't care about the like a loving relationship with I mean, a man? I mean, okay, listen, though, like... It's Drake. It's Drake. Drake. Exactly. No, no fucking crap. loving relationship. So, so I have a question about that, right? So I'm sure each of you has a celebrity crush, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I'd like to pose a question to the panel. If, if each of you had the opportunity to hook up with your celebrity crush, would you take it? Yes, like, that's my crush. So when a woman says I'm not that type of girl, mm -hmm. is she really saying I'm not the type of girl with you, but I am that type of girl with my celebrity crush? Yes, with you. So wouldn't that mean that women will make rules for the wrong guy, but break rules for the right guy? Yeah. Okay. So they, dating they're not even hiding it. I mean, when I watch this show, there's a sadness that I feel about it. I mean, I, I like whatever podcast. So, you know, Brian, I like what he, I, I like what he's doing because he's pulling girls who are showcasing. Like, it's important to see how young women feel. These are university girls oftentimes from University of Santa Barbara. And it's important to see them in their own words just tell you what they care about and what they value. Now, do I think it's representative of the female population at large? No. U uh, university of Santa Barbara is a very um, – it's a party school. You go there to party. Um, it's obviously in Santa Barbara. That's a super liberal bastion. Do I think that's reflective of what's happening in, in the middle of Kentucky, rural Kentucky? No, I don't. Um, do I think it's probably synonymous what's happening at NYU or Clip? Yeah, I do. So this is happening in a lot of cities around the country. This is how women are talking and acting. So why not showcase it? That's where the show is located. Let's see it. But when I watch these women, they're very young and they're very lost in a sad way. You know, where are their parents? And we'll get to a question about that, actually, the, in, in the end of this section. And you'll see, you know, you'll see what I'm talking about. She says it's Drake. Like, it's so what? She's willing to drop, you know, any guy that she's, you know, seeing that she really likes that's doing something good for her to go hook up with Drake, who's not going to care about her. That's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. She's saying if it's a celebrity crush, go for it. Why? Why, what, what, honey, what do you think Drake wants from you? And here's the important point. She knows what he wants. She knows that Drake would not entertain her to get to know her, to take her seriously, to bring her home to mom, and she doesn't care. For her, it's just about the sex. It's just about what he's really there for, which would be he'd use her and she'd use him and be like, oh my God, my celebrity crush. And that's okay with these women. So that's why I talk about something being broken. I, I just, this was not the norm back in the day. I say back in the day because you know I'm a relic, but imagine what she's saying. She totally fine to be used by a guy if the guy is a celebrity and it fulfills some checklist of celebrity crush. That's deeply sad. That's deeply, deeply sad. Um, let's go to, this is also, this, this is connected. Let's go to 10913. I'm sorry. I'm like, what is Telly doing over there? Then be a players. Let's be real. You're being flown out for sex only. Those players have busloads of women lining up for them for the same thing. Dot. Why do you think they'll do more for you besides just running through you? Your response to right. Robert Mugabe. Okay, Robert. Um, let me read that real quick. <laughs> she wasn't listening. To be honest, rather than just get in... I'm going to just be a little vulgar here. Rather than just getting fucked by some random who don't have nothing to him, I should, I'd rather be fucked by a baller. But why? why okay, stop. Do you see the two <laughs> options she saw in life? That's crazy. It's either sex that's meaningless and you're just a body to, you know, Drake or the likes of Drake, celebrity, or it's sex and you're just a body to a random guy. Honey, there's a whole other option here, which is that you engage with people who really like you and who want to really get to know you and where there's some meaning in that relationship. How sad that you could be a young woman and you don't even know that that option exists. You don't even think about it as an option. Your mind's not even in that. It's just sex with this one or sex with this one, meaningless this with this one or meaningless that. There's nothing of deep meaning here that you could see as possibly emerging for you in life. Why? Where are your parents? Did they not talk to you about having some self-respect? I don't, I can't understand these women who are just like, 
you know, well, you know, I'm, this is this 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 is going to happen to me anyway. I'm going to be entangled in some, you know, purely physical nonsense anyway. So, you know, I may as well just do it with a celebrity. Yeah. At the end of the day, what does that leave you with? I ask you, when you go home at night, that night, what what do you feel? Is he is that guy calling you? He's not. Is that guy checking up on you? He's not. Are you getting a, a birthday message the next day with some flowers? You're not. Are you feeling like you can get an I love you? You're not. Are you feeling like that guy's going to be reliable and dependable? He's not. Why are you doing this? Why? Because you've lost touch with A, your femininity, because B, you probably didn't have the right conversations with your parents growing up that taught you that this is not how a woman should behave. And number three, because you're lying to yourself. You bought the story that this was some sign of female empowerment when in fact you're miserable inside and you're going to wake up in 10 years and you're going to feel dark and you're probably going to be alone. And that's the truth. So my message to you, stop doing this stuff. Check it. Check yourself and ask yourself why you've become this and allowed society to convince you that this is somehow a positive, that you can't imagine a situation where you're in a mutual respect relationship. Very, very sad stuff. And we could sit here and laugh about some of this, but if you really think about it, it's dark. It's really dark how these women view themselves. It's disgusting stuff and what they're willing to do. And then they blame. What happens is they wake up in 10 years and they blame guys. Oh, guys only care about sex. Oh, God. Well, you chose those guys. There are guys that don't only care about sex. You shun them because you have damage and because your perception of self is such that you're only there for sex and you're only valued for sex and you should only, you know, treat your sexuality as your number one. So you attracted all these crappy guys and now you're mad about it. Take ownership of that yourself. It's your life. You're making the decisions. You are in the driver's seat, not the guys. They can't do anything like that without you. Of course, we're talking about issues where there's consent. Let's not, I'll have that one person out there. Well, Jed, come on, people. You know what I'm talking about? I see the chat. I'm getting there in a second. Chats, by the way, by the way, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you like what I'm doing here, if you want to support it. And also get in the chat. We're going to read those in just a couple of minutes. Okay. So on the topic of lost women, <laughs> while we're there, <laughs> let's go to number four and let's start at 137.25. This is also a whatever podcast. Uh, by the way, the blue hair alert. You know what that means, right? <laughs> you know what's coming. Sorry, Destiny. Okay, go ahead. What would you want your daughter to to be a hoe or a housewife? I, I, want, I want her to do whatever she wants as long as she's happy and mm -hmm. safe. Yes. You, you wouldn't I'm, lean in the... No. I'd be like, well, be safe about it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be safe, if you're going to become a sex worker, be safe about it. Okay, you can know? we pause that I just see. for a second? I I don't like the word they say, you know, blank or a housewife. I do 304. I don't I don't like the the, the vulgarity sometimes. Um, they can use it. It's up to them. But I don't it's not my the way I speak. So a 304 or a housewife. If you ask a woman that and she's like, well, I don't know, whatever makes her happy. I mean, that just goes to show you how lost they are. These are still grown women. And I know we look at them. We say they're young. You're still grown. You're you don't know enough to answer that you would much rather have your daughter be a housewife in a respectful, beautiful marriage where she's raising children and taking care of a beautiful home than a 304 running around town, open like 7-Eleven all night long. You, you can't confidently make that distinction. That is deeply broken and very, very sad. I wanna take up this word safe for a second. When they talk about the word safe, it drives me insane because all that young women now see is, and this is a lot of, by the way, programming from social media, from corporate media, safe to them means you're not going to get an STI. That's it. Oh, you're not going to get pregnant. You're not going to get an STI. You're going to, no STDs. Everything's good. Okay. Safe. Why don't, can we branch that word out for a minute though? Because safe to me doesn't just mean physical safety, right? In terms of, okay, I walk away and I don't have any baggage from this experience physically in that I'm not walking away with herpes, right? It also means emotional safety. Is that lifestyle, if you have a daughter, is that lifestyle of promiscuity safe for her? It's not. Take the physical component out. Mentally, is that safe? No, she's gonna constantly feel broken inside. She's gonna devalue her body She's going to start to feel like a piece of meat. She's going to start to just 
you know, she's going to start to disconnect from the sexual experience altogether so that one day when she meets someone that she does love, she doesn't bond with them in the same way. She's going to, by the way, increase the chances that she's going to have marital failure ultimately because high promiscuity is, so she, is associated with that. And we'll get to that in a second on, this, on the stats and the data. So how is that safe? The idea that you've removed all components of safety that involve somebody's emotional well-being is deeply disturbing to me and very, very, you know, programmed, right? That's the whole thing, right? Remember when I remember conversations when I was younger where they were talking about whether condoms should be distributed in schools. Do you remember that? I remember there was an episode of 90210. Old people will remember this. Y'all remember 90210? Okay. If you're in the chat and you remember 90210, I need to know now because you'll be my new favorite person. Do you remember, were you around for the original 90210? I need to know one, two things. Were you around for that? And were you team Dylan and Kelly or team Dylan and Brenda? Deli, make sure they answer that question. I want to know if you were team Dylan Kelly. <laughs> Or t it will tell me everything I need to know about you. So be careful about how you answer. Be honest, of course. Anyway, I remember an episode where Donna was arguing with her conservative mom. It was still liberal media, of course. And the mom was saying we shouldn't distribute condoms in schools because we don't want to send the message that sex is okay at this age. And Donna got up and was like, they're going to do it anyway. So you may as well give them a way to do it safely. And I remember that big debate happening. And I was very young at the time. I wasn't anywhere near an age where I was having sex when I was watching that. And I was listening to it and I was like, well, I could, I could really see both sides of this, but think about it. Think about where that led us. It went from, well, yeah, give condoms to kids in schools because they're gonna do it anyway. And, and, and oh yeah, let's have them be safe to now we're sitting and, and they've completely said, well, as long as you're safe, everything's fine with promiscuity. As long as you're safe, sleep with a whole bunch of guys. As long, you see how that was the gateway to where we are now. And that's what we talk about with the slippery slope, guys. Like, it, it, it wasn't good to tell kids, oh, you're gonna have sex anyway, so just here, here's a whole big bag full of condoms in school and just pick one, ha ha, like it's candy and you know, just stick it in your pocket and have a good time. That wasn't a good message. The message was you shouldn't be having sex in high school. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, it's not good. You're not, a lot of people aren't ready for it emotionally. And sex is something that you should be doing with somebody that you're serious about, who you really love when you're emotionally ready. I personally like don't believe in high school that people are ready for that. And you often talk to people who did have sex in high school. I didn't, but people did. And they're always say, oh, that was just not, that wasn't really sex. That was, just, I don't know what I was doing there. Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't, you weren't grown enough to really understand that again, even with a condom, there's a risk of pregnancy. We need to talk, bring back. I want to bring back the weight of these experiences. I want to bring back a sense that sex means something. I want to bring back that when you sleep with somebody, it should have value in some way and that there is risk involved. And the, the answer is not abort or plan B. The answer is don't engage in these things with someone where you're not willing to bear that risk and have that baby. That's what I want brought back. And you can call me an antique or unrealistic or whatever, but <laughs> morality isn't about whether it's realistic or not. It's about whether it's moral or not. So we have to have that conversation. And people don't like to have it because they don't want to change their own lives. I get it, but I don't care. Okay, let's go back to, we're going to get to the chat in a sec. Let's go to back to 139.39 in that same whatever podcast. Are aware of your daughter. She, she's 19 and she's slept with 40 men. Uh, <laughs> I mean, no, I'm locking you in the house. But, but okay, do you, you see your response to that, right? So, yeah. And I mean, like, some women be putting up those numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At 19, let's yeah. just say. But, okay, so. She's safe? If she's safe. Really? She's, I can't. Like, can't. So help. wait a minute. If, if she's, is she safe? You're talking about a girl at 19 who slept with 40 guys and your question is, well, did she use protection? That should not be. It do, okay, sure. Yeah, is she safe? She, should she be using protection? Sure, I guess. But she shouldn't be doing that. That is disgusting. It is disgusting to think of a 19-year-old girl who slept with 40 men. I, I don't want to hear about safe. Is it safe? No, it's not safe physically because there's always a risk. It's not safe emotionally for that young girl. It's not safe mentally. And it's going to leave her with a ton of baggage, potentially physically and emotionally. You shouldn't be behaving like that. And, and there's something wrong with your parental unit. I'm sorry, but where are mom and dad? at 19 if you're doing that. So I don't, I'm so tired, oh, was she safe? As if if you just had access to birth control, you could just, you know, be nasty, disgusting, promiscuous, and there wasn't gonna be a consequence. 
people, these women carry that with them in the same way, by the way, that women who have abortions talk to these women who've had abortions and they will tell you that they carry it with them. They suffer in their lives with that, that knowledge of what happened. This is not risk free. I know people on the left and I know people in the woke communities want this risk free, consequence free, just moral depravity. And it's not risk free. You carry it with you. It's going to sit and burrow into you. Remember that. Which, by the way, is what the system wants. Again, they want people who are medicated, who are depressed, who are easily controlled. You cannot be easily controlled. If you're healthy and you've made good decisions, it doesn't work like that. You have to be a broken, hot mess to be controlled by the system. Or it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Okay, let's go. I want to just capture one thing up before we get to the chat. 14609 is the close of that topic. Listen to the answer to this question. Just curious, how many of you, whose parents are like still together? Who has parents who are still together, still married? You, Paisley, anybody else? Everybody else divorced parents? I have a stepdad. Okay, so yeah. can you we just adopted. absorb that for a second? And I guarantee you if Brian, who does a great job, by the way, Brian, um, I do really like the Whatever podcast. And I think he does a nice job of being the host and kind of stepping back and letting these conversations happen. Parents together matters. You see it all the time. And I, I'm going to just, let's be even a little bit more controversial here. But the ideal situation is that you have one mom and you have one dad. And they get married and they get married before God and they make a commitment to each other. And that child grows up in that family where mommy and daddy are together. And it's not always going to be easy, but they're going to make it through together and they love each other and they show affection toward each other. And it's a healthy family. That is the best scenario, best case for a child. Does that mean that there aren't any other versions of that that could work? No. No. No, there are other versions of that that can work and can lead to a child that's developmentally doing well, and of course. But if we're going to target the best case scenario, that is it. It's mommy, daddy, children, healthy union, marriage, before God. Not just, I'm not talking about, everybody always says, oh, well, the state, the state. I get it. You know, the state makes you sign a piece of paper. But people who believe in a higher power believe something bigger about marriage, that when you share those vows, you're sharing it before God, you're making that promise to something bigger than yourself, right? To bless that union. There's something to that. There's something to that. So, okay. Let me get to the chat here. Um, let's see. We got Omega Rosetsu. Hi. Some of y'all are very loyal. You know, I love you. Okay. Five bucks here. Guys and gals, never go for anyone who monkey branches from their significant other to be with you. The other was only good for a time. Same will be, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. You got to spot people who re loyalty and, and commitment are integral because life gets hard. Curveballs happen. People lose jobs. People go through difficult times. You need somebody who's going to ride those waves with you. Randall Rodecki, rock chef. Uh, and now this woman is probably getting alimony and child support talking about the woman who left. Oh, man, that's probably true. You never know. The, the one who left, he's talking about over the 14 years and went for the soulmate. You never know. Rob Adro is here, five bucks. I joined the 44 Club with you today. Jed, glad to see people from our generation doing big things. Happy birthday, 44 Club. Man, we're getting old. It's okay, though. You know, I embrace it. I actually, like, feel really... It's a blessing to age. The alternative is not good, <laughs> you know? All right, Beaten Cheeks is here. Five bucks, just donating for a good cause. And I just found out donating to you guys is a mark off my business expenses. Well, there you go. <laughs> Everybody wins, Beaten Cheeks. I was 90210. I was team no drama. My God, I did not get any responses to my question. Listen, you're not going to cop out on this one. I want to know. I want to know. Dylan, or Ke Dylan and Kelly or Dylan and Brenda. Don't cop out. In fact, we should put that as a question. Imagine if we put that on the channels. So people would be like, Jet's lost our mind. <laughs> Listen, you're lucky that we don't sit here. If I could and didn't suffer the copyright damage, this show would be a recap of those shows. We would just sit and watch together with a big old tub. Just a bachelor. <laughs> exactly. Whoo! We can't. Really affects me, too, because I have a lot of stuff I want to react to, and I can't pull it because I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a strike for copyright. All right, Joe W., uh, my buddy Ant, 
do this exactly same thing, leave her husband, Mr. Wright, <laughs> gold hand, Mr. Handy Engineer. Now she's alone crying. She lost her family, husband, and house. She don't have kids, only my buddy nephew. You know what? I'm telling you, because you know what? People are, they live in the moment, right? This is what I'm talking about, though. I'm talking about your vices. Your, you got to, you gotta, as a human being, you got to think about your own vice. Everybody's got them, right? You know, are you somebody who is rash in your decisions? Are you somebody who in this area of life is really disciplined, but not over here? You got to think about that stuff. And the goal is to not let it run you. You can't, you're either going to run your vices or your vices are going to run you. And that's up to you at the end of the day, right? Okay, guy friends, we're going to have to mute this one, Deli, uh, yep. as a heads up. Guy friends, can a woman have male friends? And if so, why are they there? Check out this video. It's going to lose a little bit of its uh, appeal to me without the music, but we'll have to, I don't know, maybe I'll sing. All right, so let's mute it because we it's a song we'll get copyright you know, stuff for. And it's essentially a girl in the airport. She's testing her guy friends in public. Okay. Let's see what happens here. Goes up to each one of them, puts out this weird hand, waiting to see what they do. <laughs> mm -hmm. That one kind of does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. I don't like that one. Mm -mm. That's a little intimate, is it not? Okay. All right. It goes over to this one. This is some weird handshake apparently they have going on, I guess, that, okay. This is, uh, oh, here we go. Oh, okay, look at the guy's <laughs> face. All right, so cute girl, right? Cute glasses, we can all acknowledge that. Um, so why did she do this, first of all? Why did she do, well, she, she, it's interesting. First of all, she's got a lot of guy friends, no? Is that a lot of guy friends? Yeah, a lot of guy friends. Just saying. Why do you think all those guys are there? Do you think, audience, that all those guys just want to be buddy-buddy with that girl? Or do you think that if she turned around and said to them, any of them, all of them, hey, I'd like to hook up, how many of those guys do you think would hook up with her? Let's say all, because that's the answer. Every single one of those guys is just orbiting, <laughs> just waiting, just going around, orbiting, waiting. Is it, is it time yet? Not yet? Okay, maybe next time. They all want something more than friendship. Guys don't gravitate toward cute girls and want to be their friends. They're just waiting for you to give them the green light. Now, I don't know if she has a boyfriend, but imagine she does. Imagine she does, and she tells him, oh, these are just guy friends. Oh, they're just friends. They're friends because today you've made that decision about them. But if you flip a switch like this, all those guys are like, yeah, where do I need to be? What time? You know it. You know it. Now, what was your perception, audience, of that? I personally think the guy who gives the kiss is the most authentic at the end. I thought that was like, that's the guy with the moves, right? You could tell. Gave that kiss, walked away, and everyone else was like, oh, I should have thought of that, right? But it does kind of show you this phenomenon of, I always hear about this, the women with the guy friends. So can women have male friends? It depends. So... If you're in a relationship, if you're in a relationship with a guy, I don't care what the status is, say exclusive and beyond, right? And you have guy friends together, the safest option is that it's the guy's friends that then befriends you both, right? If you have guy friends together though, and by that I mean male friends that you see together, male friends that you maybe double date with, male friends that you only interact with that guy in the presence of your man, that's fine. That's totally cool. If you are in a relationship and you have these guy friends separately, by the way, single or married, that's where the problems arise. Because now you're having that, those conversations away over here, a little laughter, a little giggle. And remember that men and women naturally flirt. They do. They do. Even in work settings, sometimes you'll see this and you'll see that people have to put like guards up. You know, they have to check themselves because I think there's a natural hormonal thing that happens among men and women. So now you've got, if you've got a girl and she's going over here and she's building these individual relationships with guys or she has these guys from the past where, you know, things maybe got flirty from time to time. It's just a ticking time bomb. It really is. And by the way, I will say the same for men. 
men, you can't be in a relationship with a woman and have a whole bunch of single female friends without it getting complicated. Because here's the thing. If you get into a relationship in 2022, right? And let's say these are your, this is your existing pool of friends and say some of them are women. Okay. What happened with those women in the past? Now you're in a relationship, but are those women that you've hooked up with in any way in the past? Are those women that you've had a flirtatious thing going back and forth? Check your text history. Was it a little bit, you know, maybe some heart emojis and some hard eyes went back and forth. You know what I'm saying? It was probably very different before you got into a relationship and now it's changed on paper, but there's still a lot of that emotional tendency back and forth, how it used to be that exists. It's very hard to navigate. It really can't be done in a way that makes everybody comfortable. Your relationships outside have to change when you get into a relationship with someone seriously. They just do. You have to make new friends together. If you're a guy, your guy friend's fine. If you're a woman, your female friend's fine. You know, generally, unless they're trying to sabotage that situation or, you know, some of them do that because misery loves company, as we talked about. But same sex friends, if you're heterosexual, becomes a problem. It just becomes a problem. Um, opposite sex friends, I'm sorry, becomes a problem. I was like, what am I saying there? I think I'm confused. <laughs> Jeff's confused. Super opposite sex friends. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so it generally doesn't work. And you'll always find, like people say, well, no, that can happen. What if it's people who aren't attracted to each other? Okay, listen, again, can it happen that you're in a marriage and the, the wife has a male friend and both of them would never date each other. There's no attraction whatsoever. Sure, it can happen. Is it likely? No, because even in best case scenario, you're going to have one person that is attracted and it's going to just create a weirdness there unless that male friend is also very close to the husband and you're spending that time together. It just complicates everything. Let me also tell you again, guys don't hang around women they don't, that they don't want something to happen there. They're not just like, you know what? I'm going to have a whole bunch of female friends. It just doesn't work like that. It, that's not how it works. It, it doesn't. These guys in this video, they all want a piece. They all want some type of something going on there. You could see, and you can see it in their smiles, and you can see it in the little bit of flirtation that underlies all their interactions. So just know it. Guy friends typically mean guy friends or guy friends or guy friends. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it, right? It's not just guy friends. It's guy friends. <laughs> Pretty true. Okay. So you have to just know it. And by the way, women who are honest with themselves will know it and they will change the nature of those relationships and they will, you know, they'll change them. That when they get into a relationship with a guy, suddenly that other guy that they used to be friends with will now be someone that they only see with their, you know, significant other. They will bring that significant other and they will form their own individual relationship. Those two guys, everyone will be made to feel comfortable because it's awkward, no matter how you slice it. I don't want to hear somebody in the chat I know is going to be like, well, I have all these male friends. Honey, what do you do? Do you have friends or do you have friends or come on, let's fess up here. Don't be lying to yourself. So you can keep doing the bad stuff that you want to be doing. Come on. Come on. All right. Caleb Faust is here. Five bucks. This pod feels heavy to anyone else. Remember, good wins in the end. God is good. It's not over yet. Keep fighting. What do you mean heavy? What are you talking he about? He doesn't like divorce. Oh, is he he's don't want to talk about? Yeah. He's saying like the idea of divorce just brings him down so much. Yeah, but you have to listen. You have to live with it. You have to talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. You do. In the same way we have to talk about the forever chemicals in your contact lenses. It's not <laughs> good. Nobody wants it there, but it's there. So better that we ignore it and live in some sort of weird utopia and be dumb or we talk about it. Divorce is terrible. It happens. We have to address it. Rob Adro, Dylan and Brenda, Dylan and Brenda, Kelly for myself. I see how it is. I did. I'll give you my answer when I'm done. Please do not loose Ralkin. 902 was a nasty show. I was too old for this U.S. nastiness. It was not a nasty show. By the way, it was not nasty. I will tell you. It didn't start out nasty anyway. You're right. At the end, a little nasty. But it didn't start out nasty. In fact, when Brenda and Dylan first had sex, it was a big deal. Spring dance. In high school. Shouldn't happen then. Okay, I'll give you that. But regardless, it was a big deal. It was talked about. Then they stopped having sex. It was a pregnancy scare. These things were weighty for a reason. Omega Rosetsu. I remember 902 and 0 in 1991 episode and nope. Oh, people don't like. Mm -hmm. 
Verdan Horia gave 20 bucks. It's not surprising that damage happens when the father is gone. His gift to his daughter is to shepherd her heart through her teens when she is open but not experienced. Without him, she gets hurt. With him, she gains wisdom. I would agree. Rajesh Joshi, I'm not sure how much money that is. Uh, I, I'm not going to translate that well because I don't know where, the, where this is coming from. Feminism is spreading. Oh, India. Very fast in India. Men here have started avoiding women for marriage due to the rising body count and horrible temper tantrums. <laughs> I have had a tantrum or two in my day. I'm not going to lie. Omega Rasetsu, five bucks. The difference between why a man and woman would be platonic friends is who is attracted to whom. If no attraction both ways, only then it's friends. True, but how often is that? How often is that that both not often. There's always one party that's attracted. And honestly, guys are attracted may, way more, you know, easily, I think, to women. I do. I think guys are less picky, you know. Right? Okay. Mowerman, USA. Do you mow lawns? I'm interested. 25 bucks. Good Lord, Jed. The young ladies, the soulmate woman and the handmaiden make me even more proud of my daughters. What in the world, Jedediah? Our country really is screwed, isn't it? Big fan since the Red Eye days. Oh, man, that was a fun show, wasn't it? <gasps> you all remember when I used to do Red Eye? Oh, man, it was so fun. We used to film it at 8 p.m. or 8.30, 8.15, somewhere in there, and it would roll out at 3 a.m., and I would wake up, and my Twitter would be blown up. Like, I cannot describe to you, and I this is coming from somebody who hosted The View and Outnumbered and The Five. Nothing blew up my Twitter feed like Red Eye. It was insane. We had comedians on. It was wild. Thank you for the love. I loved, that was the one show, truthfully, in all of corporate media, that was the one show that I really enjoyed doing because I got to be made. You re Y'all remember when I used to wear the, uh, the, the black fishnets with the, the, I used to look like I was in a band, right? Do you remember when I had the, the logo tees and all that? Oh, it was nuts. Riff Lemon, 10 bucks. I was around in 1990. I was in the Marines watching chick drama. Wasn't on my radar. Well, there you go. I was not in the Marines. I was watching the chick drama. And I have to say, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so the answer to the question very clearly is that Dylan should have been with Brenda and Kelly was a bit of a menace. And by the way, slept with um, and did the nasty with her friend's boyfriend. And we can't have that. Okay. Promiscuity is a black hole. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, Y'all see that we're going to cover it, I think. Uh, Y'all see that exchange between Justin Waller and Lila Rose on the Whatever podcast? Very interesting. Very important, actually. We're, we'll talk about that. Not today. But there was an article in the New York Post about promiscuity. And I think it's important. Um, as men, women, again, do I think that men and women process promiscuity differently? I do. Men and women are different. That is fundamental. Okay. Do I think that women experience more damage as a result of promiscuity and a promiscu promiscuous path? Emotional damage, yes. In terms of how they feel, do I believe that it that it brings men down a dark path of wasted time, of you know, wasted energy, of soul death? Yes, I do. And it's often, by the way, promiscuity often pairs itself with you know drinking, with drugs, with nightlife culture that's not healthy, with a whole bunch of other healthy additions to unhealthy additions to your life that kind of sink you temporarily. It's like you're in quicksand and you always got to be digging your way out. This is interesting. For those of you who want to get married, take a listen. A new study by researchers at Brigham Young University in Utah echoes a substantial body of research to conclude that a certain degree of premarital sex could impact your future relationship prospects. Experts in family studies at BYU's Wheatley Institute have shown that 10 to 20 percent of married adults who have only had sex with one person, one person, their spouse, reported having a happier and higher quality union than those who had many sexual partners before getting hitched. So if you've had sex with one person, person okay the, you know those are the people that society modern society makes fun of them or, oh you're a virgin until you're married why not lose her meantime maybe not a loser maybe just happily married just saying well our study confirms what other national studies have been finding the last few years that sexually inexperienced dating couples are two to three times more likely to be in a highly stable marriage it appears that sexual exclusivity between spouses provides an underappreciated foundation for the intimacies of marriage and helps spouses create a mutually satisfying relationship founded on emotional int intimacy and healthy communication and to expand on that just a few stats on the next page just one in ten married people who label themselves as highly sexually experienced so if you go into a marriage and you have your body count is high let's just say that only one in ten of those people who ultimately get married say they're very sat satisfied in their marriage. Only 25% of married people who had five to nine sexual partners and 14% of those who had been with 10 or more reported a very high level of relationship stability in their marriage. On the other hand, 
45% of those deemed sexually inexperienced reported the highest degree of stability. And 80% or nearly 80% of those who have had sex only with their partner reported greater emotional closeness in their relationship. So I know, again, I know that it's like taboo. I know people will say, oh, Jad, that's not realistic. I'm not here to tell you what's realistic for 2023. I'm here to tell you what works, right? In the same way I could sit here and say, well, it's not realistic to tell somebody to eat really healthy, to exercise, to put the donuts down. It's not realistic to tell somebody to put down their phone all day long and that all of this constant absorption in social media is unhealthy. It's not realistic. I don't care. I don't care what's realistic. I'm telling you what's healthy and what's not. And the data supports that people who are promiscuous prior to marriage have a harder time making that marriage work. And it's over and over and over again. So if you want to live, we can talk about, again, how promiscuity affects men and women differently. We can talk about how, you know, maybe, and I, I do believe it's true that you know, women care less about a man's body count than a man cares about a woman's body count within reason. You know, you got 200 as a body count. Now you're just looking like mm, the walking disease that something's going on that's not right up here. But regardless, I do think that's true. But that doesn't change the reality of when you are engaging with more and more people, there is data that shows that when you ultimately get married, you have a harder time making that work. It just is. So there has to be something to this sharing of yourself so readily. There has to be something that's bad about that, about putting yourself out there with so many people, about not having things have value. You should, you, you want to look at yourself as valuable. You want to build yourself up to the point where you say, I'm doing this right. I'm doing this right. And have an honest assessment, not delusional, right? You're, you're exercising you're doing a good job at work, you're having a good relationship with your family, you're in, you know, you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you're treating them well, there's a situation of mutual respect, you want to, you want to, you want to think of yourself as someone who has value, who brings value to the world. If that's the case, then you shouldn't be sharing yourself in situations physically or otherwise that aren't good and healthy for you. I don't care if it's, you know, oh, well, you know, it's easy or it's, I, it, we're not, again, this is not about what's easy. This is about what's right. There is a right and a wrong. We can all sit. And I think if every single one of you sits down and thinks about it, you'll think about it and say, well, she's right. I don't want to do it or I do want to do it or whatever. But you know, it's a point to be made about right versus wrong. And that's not grounded in like what you think right is or some you know pure subjective version of that. It's grounded in right versus wrong. Murder is wrong. Bank robbery is wrong, Right. We should be able to say that sleeping with a whole bunch of people that don't have any value and don't mean anything to you is wrong. Be okay. Get yourself to a point where you can acknowledge that and you'll come to a whole other realization about a lot of other things. And I will guarantee you that that realization will help your life for the better. Okay. I want to talk to you. I see more chats coming in. I want to talk to you about... Um, something that's going on with the matrix here you know i care about your health um we actually have a few sponsorships that we're going to be working with that i'm really excited about who are going to help you get even healthier um some renewals and some new ones but i talk about forever chemicals and the reason that i talk about that is because there's something called pfas listen listen up even if you're not into this stuff, please listen to what I'm saying. It's something called PFAS. Um, they're forever chemicals. And the reason they're called forever chemicals is because they remain in the body for a very, 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 very long time. They burrow into your cells and they cause disease. They cause all sorts of dysfunction. They're showing up everywhere, y'all. Okay, this is from The Guardian. First, we're going to read this. U.S. food pesticides contaminated with forever chemicals testing fines. Okay. The EPA has previously been silent. By the way, don't trust the EPA. Just my opinion. I don't trust the EPA as far as I could throw them. But they are previously silent on PFAS in food pesticides, even as it is found that the chemicals in not, oh, even as it found the chemicals in non-food crop products. The potential for millions of acres of contaminated food cropland demands swifter and stronger regulatory actions. They're talking about regulation. We'll talk about why, why that's a problem in a second, too. But So PFAS are a class of about 15,000 chemicals, often used to make thousands of products across dozens of industries, resist water, stains, and heat. Okay, so in order to make stuff, think about that. Think about all the products you use that are water-resistant, 
Think about all the products you use that are stain resistant or heat resistant. Those contain forever chemicals, clothing, uh, rain, rain gear, ski gear, waterproof stuff. Y'all wear stuff that uh, says, yeah, we wear it to the gym. And it says, oh, it's water resistant. Okay, well, there you go. A lot of swimsuits have it. The chemicals are ubiquitous and linked at low levels of exposure to cancer. At, listen to that again. Linked at low levels of exposure to cancer, thyroid disease, kidney dysfunction, birth defects, autoimmune diseases, and other serious health problems. They're called forever chemicals because they do not naturally degrade. They don't degrade in the environment. And you know where else they don't degrade? In your body. Your body can't push them out. So they burrow deep and they cause a host of issues. Well, now testing has found that these PFAS are in three out of seven agricultural pesticides, including Intrepid 2F, which state of California data shows is the second most widely applied product behind Roundup. It's all over the food supply, people. Okay. More than 1.7 M pounds of it were applied to over 1.3 meter cumulative acres of California land. Okay. Grapes almonds, peaches, pistachios are foods that are implicated in this mess. The study also found chemicals in of another nature which contain the neurotoxin malathion, terrible. The, the FDA began monitoring this stuff in 2019 and has detected them in fruits and vegetables but has not set any limits. Why? If you know this stuff is a problem, why? Well, that's the system at work. So this is something that's going on. It says after conducting its own pesticide testing, the EPA concluded in early 2021, the chemicals were leaching from plastic containers in which they were stored and said the contamination was limited to pesticide use in mosquito sides to prevent, you know, the mosquito population from biting everybody. But the contamination continues. In late 2022, testing of insecticides used primarily for cotton, cotton, but which could potentially be used on food found PFAS. So in other words, this stuff is very, very prevalent. Very, very, very prevalent. Now you ask, oh, we'll just regulate it. Do you trust these regulatory agencies that first of all have this data and have been ignoring it? No, I don't. I don't trust any of these agencies, by the way, to have a strong, these agencies know nothing about health. They're not going to, this is not going to be regulated properly. This is about your consumer knowledge. This is why, the reason that people buy stuff, by the way, when you look at fruits and vegetables, and I know it gets expensive, which is why I talk to you about money being power and freedom and control over your health. The reason people buy organic is because those thing, those uh, items that are certified organic haven't been sprayed with pesticides. It, it, you can do research and, and buy food that's glyphosate tested, which means that it's not exposed to all of these problems that are happening with Roundup. Okay, And where does that show up? In things like oats and things like flowers that you use in your house to bake a cake, to cook your pancakes, whatever it may be. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy, and it takes money. That's real. But that's why I'm talking to you about this stuff. Um, one other note on this that I saw that's really interesting. You all wear contact lenses? I did for a while. Then I got LASIK surgery, and that was a disaster, so I'm not advocating for that either. But take a look at this. Contact lenses and PFAS. If you wear contact lenses, you might want to think about wearing glasses instead. A new study reveals that most contact lenses contain extremely high levels of PFAS, a harmful forever chemical linked to reduce testosterone, obesity, and eye diseases. And then it goes into a whole discussion about what they are. Um, where do you find these? You find them in dental floss. I'm going to just name some items. Dental floss. You can buy ones. By the way, I'm going to be bringing some of these partnerships to the show because I've screened them, the products for these chemicals, and I'm going to be able to guarantee you that they're not in there. Um, dental floss. Women who get menstrual cycles, sanitary pads are known for that. Um, they, the study took 18 popular brands of contact lenses and every one of them contained extremely high levels of organic fluorine, which is a marker for PFAS. But listen to what the, te like this is, it's not low level. The contact lenses tested exceeded 100 parts per million of PFAS. For context, this is 50,000 times higher than the highest level deemed safe in drinking water by the EPA. That's in your contact lenses going in your eyeball. Does that sound weird to you? If it doesn't, it should. And then it goes on to talk about ocular conditions associated with substances like that. It goes on to talk about, you know, myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, all this stuff that happens. So I want, one thing I want you to hit home, first of all, you can't live in fear. Knowledge is power. Find out, 
figure out how to get on. A lot of you are much more internet savvy than I am. You just go on there and you do your research and you find companies that screen for this stuff. But there is a perception out there, and this is why this matters to me to share with you. There is a perception out there that if something exists in the marketplace, like you go to CVS and you see a whole bunch of stuff, you go to Dwayne Reed, you see a whole bunch of hair dyes, uh, whatever, that that stuff has been screened and that it's safe. And that's not how it works. Most of these products have not been screened at all. They're not screened for chemical toxicities. In fact, if you buy products in Europe, oftentimes you can buy the same hair dye by the same company, right? Say you buy whatever company it is, X company, this color hair dye in Europe and you buy it in the United States, for those listening that are in America versus in Europe, you will look and the ingredients will be different because there are certain ingredients that have been linked to cancer, to whatever, that Europeans can't put in their products, but we can because it's not regulated, because there's no there's no oversight. So that stuff shows up on the shelves and you're using it, you're thinking it's in the store, so it must be okay. It doesn't work like that. It is no oversight on a lot of these products, makeup, hair products, typically stuff that women use in high quantity, which is interesting because women also then showcase higher rates of autoimmune illness. And you think about, wow, look at all the products that women use compared to men. It's it's interesting. Is regulation the answer to this? Listen, I, I don't believe that regulation is going to solve this problem because I don't trust the regulatory bodies. What I believe solves this problem is consumer pressure, meaning you at home do research and you say, I'm not going to buy products like this, so I'm just not going to buy these. But oh, hey, there's this hair dye company over here that doesn't use X, Y, and Z, and there's no formaldehyde, and there's no, I'm going to use them. That product that you found, you now give your money to, raises in value in the marketplace, and the other products that you neglect either have to improve their quality and remove the those items to compete with this product over here, or they go out of business. That is what changes the system. That is why the whole green beauty emerged of makeup and hair and all this, because they they set a higher standard where now regular companies have to try to weed out these toxic ingredients. So that's my message to you. Don't be afraid, be empowered. Riff Lehman, 10 bucks. I was around in 1990. I was in the Marines. Oh, I read that one. You don't like the drama. I see. Rob Adro, the nasty show was Melrose. Oh, Melrose Place, where everybody was sleeping with everybody, right? Remember that? Ooh, I did watch that for a short time. I didn't feel the same way about it as I did 90210. 90210 really was like something I really enjoyed. Luce Rolkin, Red Eye on YouTube. In Hot Legs, really. Jed Beale has Hot Legs on 21812C. Oh, look, he's revealing all my stuff. Yeah, there was an, it was a chair at the end. It was called the leg chair. And they would typically seat girls in that, not all girls, but that, that was my pretty re my resident seat on the end. Um, I don't know, maybe I have nice legs. Woohoo! Who knows? <laughs> anyway, thanks for the comments. Everyone, thank you for being with me today. I appreciate it. We will be back here uh, on Wednesday. Is today Monday? Yep. Wow. It feels weird. We Mother's Day like threw everything off. We'll be back here on Wednesday. Thank you for being here and for all your chats and everything. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. By the way, some guests we have coming up. MLD is coming back to the States, so he's going to join me in studio. We've got Rolo and Michael Sartain coming on. We're going to have a little bit of a debate. I will warn you about that and some other guests in the works. So stick with us. We'll see you soon.